on a legislature. Uh, my good friend, Marty Seifer, candidate for governor. Of Good morning, it's still a morning. Uh, my name is Marty Seifert, I am a candidate for governor. I got in the race a little bit late, around Thanksgiving time of last year in 2013. First of all, I want to thank each and every one of you for taking out of your schedule on a Saturday to elect the next governor in the state of Minnesota. Um, we have a lot of challenges in front of us. Those of us who work for a living have been out hustled by those who vote for a living. I want you to think about that a little bit. Um, Mark Dayton has been a disaster for this state. I can't, uh, you know, just be very plain spoken about that. Uh, big government taxing, regulating, and uh, instituting policies that we're not interested in. And when it comes to things like big government, Mark Dayton hasn't met a program that he doesn't want to fund, uh, a big government idea that he doesn't want to subsidize, and uh, we want to turn that around. I am for abolishing the Met Council. I hope that's okay with this group. I have somebody now in uh, rural Minnesota come to me and say, what should I care about the Met Council? I don't live in Hennepin or Anoka or Ramsey counties. What do I care? And I said, just like we care about the people, we cared about the people in East Berlin who were subjected to the taxes and regulatory authority of an unelected Politburo for years and years, we ought to care about the people in our own state were subjected to the taxes and regulatory authority of an unelected Politburo, just rename the Met Council. And they said, in 30 seconds, you changed my mind. And just like it took Nixon to go to China, maybe it takes a rural guy to get rid of the Met Council because they operate under the same philosophy. When it comes to health care, I've been in the private sector the last four years. I've worked at a Catholic hospital out of Marshall, Minnesota, and I have seen people lose their health care who have lost their health insurance. 140,000 Minnesotans have lost their health insurance since October of last year. And nobody seems to care. And so we as Republicans want to make sure that a system, while it was not perfect, a system that had people in the, in the health care that they were interested in get to stay there. Noel Medical Center told me that the entire construction firm in Noel, Minnesota was booted uh, from being able to have their own doctor and they now have to drive to Mankato because the Noel Medical Center is out of network under the Obamacare scheme. And so all these young construction workers with pregnant wives and, and uh, uh, health issues have to now be ripped away from their health provider and be sent off 30 miles away. These are real people with real problems. They aren't necessarily Republicans, but we need to be talking with them about how we're going to solve those issues and that's how we win elections. And it's not about winning elections, it's about making sure Minnesota is a good place for our kids and our grandkids. On education, I am opposed to Common Core. I'm going to keep it out of this state. I am going to work very hard for more local control, more parental control. My kids go to parochial school. My running mate, Pam Myra, home educated her kids for 12 years. But we have good charter schools and good public schools and good private schools and good parochial schools. But mom and dad raise their kids, not big brother and uncle Sam. And that's what the Democrats have forgot about, that they want to make choices for us rather than we making the choices for our own kids. I want an entrepreneurial society for our, for our kids to grow up in. When I was growing up, we invented things in our garage. Medtronic up the road, invented in a guy's garage, right? Polaris snowmobiles invented in a guy's garage or mom's garage. Deep River Falls, you go to that packaging company that was invented in the guy's garage. And now under Obama and Dayton, you live in mom's garage rather than inventing things in mom's garage. And so you want to change that. I'm opposed to the Southwest Light Rail Scheme. $1.5 billion of waste that will never meet a cost-benefit analysis. Imagine how many roads you could build for that. But roads equal freedom. The Democrats don't like that. So let me just wrap up a little bit. Why is Marty Seifert a better candidate? We have five fantastic guys that are running outside of him. Uh, what's the difference? We are not going to be able to implement the conservative agenda for a better Minnesota if we don't win the general election. When I ran for the House of Representatives, my re-election rates in my district was 60 to 70% of the vote, even though Bill Clinton, Amy Klobuchar, Colin Peterson, 
uh, Lori Swanson, Mike Hatch, and other Democrats won my district. I was always the Republican top vote getter in every single election. Why? Because I'm squishy or liberal? No. Because I offer good solutions. And in my seven terms in the House, I never once took a penny from a lobbyist. And in my two runs for governor, not a penny from a lobbyist. Out of the 201 state lawmakers when I served there, there were four of us that didn't take contributions from lobbyists. The perception of the average person when it comes to politics is that politicians are bought and paid for. I hate to break the news to you. And with this guy, there's a little different persona involved. And so we're going to do what's best for the people under the Constitution to make sure that the government does what it should do and no more, and that the people not be a servant of its government, but that the government be a servant of its people. And we have lost that in the last several decades in the state of Minnesota. So I am hopeful, as late in the game as I've gotten, that you've got several months to make your mind up, and I want you to have an open mind. I know some people have buttons for other candidates, all good people. But at the end of the day, we've got to nominate a candidate who's going to be able to speak strongly and articulately to those people who are not necessarily Republicans and say, we have a vision and we have a solution for you and we have some specifics, not just a bunch of generalities. And so I hope you have an open mind. Not so open mind that your brain falls out. Others are voting for Dave. <laughs> have an open mind. And when we move forward, we move forward as a team. We are all on the same team, every single person in this room. So I want to thank you for your effort. I want to thank you for your work. We have a lot of work to do to win this election. I know the polls, that are, you know, people read these polls and stuff, and I come closest to Dayton of all of us. But remember, as an incumbent, when he's sitting at 50%, that's the ceiling. And when we're down here, that's the floor. And our job is to tighten that up. And we've got eight months to do it, so let's get to work. Thank you. God bless you, and God bless the great state of Minnesota. Thank you.